Right, so Catapult, we, we were founded about six years ago along with another a group of eight other organisations called Catapult uh, to address specific failings in the UK economy. So we're the digital guys. We exist to try to improve digitisation of uh, the UK economy. Uh, there's the satellite applications Catapult, medicines discovery, offshore energy, transport systems, and so on. You, you get the picture. We sit between a number of uh, roles, so we try to connect players in large industry to small industry, vice versa, uh, research bodies, government policy makers, to get a rounded picture of the ecosystem, figure out where we can apply interventions to improve things. And I'm the blockchain guy, I'm the lead technologist of blockchain at Capital. So, I sit alongside some colleagues in Future Networks who work in IoT and 5G. We also have expertise in artificial intelligence and immersive systems, virtual augmented reality. Um, of course, I think we all in this room know that our governments around the world are sticking loads of money into AI and the promise that it's going to solve every problem. But none of them seem to be sticking money into our layer which is actually how you gather, collect, corral the data between all the parties. So maybe we can uh, try to fight back against that. Yeah. Right, so our industry focus is manufacturing, of which the construction sector is a major player in the UK and French economies. It would be great to make them as efficient as possible to maximize uh, the, <coughs> their capabilities to deliver. I will skip these. Okay. Ledgers, connecting, the old internet, the updates, cryptography, <coughs> synchronization. Market research. So we began our journey into DLT shortly after I joined by undertaking a structured piece of market research. Uh, you can find the uh, report. I should have brought a couple of copies with me, but I forgot to, I'm afraid. Um, we go into about three months of research where we identified at the time 270 companies. I'm very sure this has grown. I keep hearing about new ones almost every week, probably into the low 300s now based in the UK. So, for example, we don't consider IOTA to be a UK company, even though they have offices and, and operate out in the UK because they're not registered primarily in the UK. So these are UK registered blockchain companies. Um, as you're probably all aware, the market divides into kind of four sectors. There's, in the UK, there's about 30 companies building blockchains. There's about 90 companies building apps that sit on top of blockchains. There's about 90 companies servicing that section of the, those two sectors, with specialist coding, uh, market research, consultancy, banking services, and the like. Uh, and then there's about 40 who deal with tokenization and uh, uh, trading cryptocurrencies, but of course they're custodial, so we consider those non-decentralized. As you'd expect, most companies are still growing, so like we just heard from this gentleman here, a brand new you know, company growing, eager to get product into the market to, to make a big impact on things. But there are already quite a few companies out there, five or six that we found with more than 50 employees operating in the UK in the blockchain sector. Most of the interest still comes from fintech, probably because that's where blockchain, you know, Bitcoin was born, and that was the one that it was promising to threaten. So they had to get their heads around it very quickly, meaning that other industries have lagged behind. So we've got evidence, and I'm sure this is replicated here in France, of massive local talent, uh, little engagement from traditional sectors. So how do we try to break that impasse? Even though we've all heard the stories of supply chain improvements, item provenance improvements, how do we secure things? So I think the failings come from a few, uh, uh, for a few reasons, and see if these resonate with you out in the audience today. First of all is the, is the style of thinking about what it is that a blockchain or a distributed ledger is. You, cannot, you can go out as a traditional company and you can buy artificial intelligence. You can commission a data science project from a small consultancy and end up with positive results in your business as a result. You can go out and you can buy some IoT devices and deploy them and, and end up with some positive benefit. You cannot realistically go out and buy a blockchain or commission a single party distributed ledger. It's just a database, isn't it? 
So we need to rethink the approach to the streets of ledger deployment. It is infrastructure by nature. And if we look back in history, we see that you know, the internet made massive changes in the ways that companies would approach each other, contact each other, trade data, send invoices, things like this. What we're now asking companies to conceive of is that these next two layers can become entirely aligned and shared using distributed ledger to make processes efficient as possible. Therefore, companies have to understand what their own personal boundaries of behavior are so that they know where the safe areas to collaborate lie between them. That's really tough in a very sort of monopolistic, capitalistic mindset where you want to capture the entire market. And so we kind of sit here where you've got a lot of blockchain companies with products trying to push it uphill to people who have no idea why they should take this up beyond the dreams. Uh, and we've got uncertain business models. We've got small companies unable to engage multiple large players simultaneously. Uh, and of course there's technical complexity, lack of uh, proven value propositions. The first thing anyone ever says to us is, well, who else is doing this? Well, no one else. You would be the first. They go, well, that's a difficult one, isn't it? Okay, so it's a demand side problem. How do we break demand side problems? That's a, that's a tough one. I don't have a guarantee answer for that. So technical complexity, I think we all understand that you know, we've got these players in the market, but then you tell a company that there's also these guys out there, how do they know which solution to pick, which blockchain or distributed ledger to go with for their, for their particular problem? Inside the ledger itself, there's additional layers of complexity. We all understand networking and databasing, those are quite old technologies now, but when it comes to consensus layers, and building good functional distributed applications that sit between multiple parties, that's where we're starting to face some of this. Uh, uh, well, the fact that it's only a 10-year-old technology. We don't really know how to do it you know, properly quite yet. That will evolve. And of course, the users who define whether this is a worthwhile system or a worthwhile deployment. So delving into consensus briefly, um, you know, everyone's heard blockchain. So there's a variety of consensus protocols out there, and we've, we've got Marta speaking later from Hyperledger, where Hyperledger Fabric uses very different, you know, non-proof-of-work uh, consensus methods. Uh, so the, the first question really is, do you know or do you not know the parties who you want to be in consensus with, or who you want to maintain your ledger for you? Right. So you've got the technical stack. You've also got the process stack where from the consensus protocol, you can add in then payment methods, so tokenization, movement of value between parties. Uh, you can decide on the rules by which that value is exchanged or those smart contracts execute. And then you need to have a way of ensuring proper digital twins of the object that you're going to be transferring between parties. And then how does this behave with traditional law? How does this behave with identity systems? Lots of questions still not fully answered out there. How do you gather stakeholders? So anyone in the room who is a company playing with blockchain is, is still here in the very early innovator section. So it's hard to gather colleagues and comrades who will join you in that journey if you are so far ahead of them already in your thinking. And the fact that you need to mobilize all parts of your value chain at the same time can be quite daunting. So people often find themselves a little bit like this. They get to their local peak, they find themselves out in front, and they go, that's where I want to be, but there's this huge chasm in front of me where I need to spend even more money, I need to spend even more time convincing my colleagues or my, my enemies to come join me on this journey. And value props, we've all heard the stories, haven't we? We've heard how this is going to be amazing, it's going to save billions, everyone's going to be free, and money will be improved. But it all looks a little bit like this, doesn't it? Um, where are the reports that you can stick on a CEO's desk to say company X implemented distributed ledger in this way and it saved them 3.2% gross? Anyone with their soul will go, 3 point, oh my god, keep up with that. You know, we're not quite there. So I think the message that a few people are going to give today is that we need to start collaborating. We need to start collaborating in, in the right way. That's helping companies break down their problems, identifying the correct use cases to take forward with this technology, 
proving out things in a very small piecemeal way so that they get hungry for the next solution. They get, they get the interest and the bug that we've all caught in this room. Tapping into local talent, having, so our selling point is that we want to be that neutral coordinator. And as I'm sure um, uh, uh, you appreciate a, a decent place to be as a neutral party. Um, so defining the problem, sense checking, deploying solutions, all the sort of stuff that we're engaged in. I'll take you through an example in just a little bit. So we call this process a field lab because um, it's you know out there in the field and it is experimental. And that's the model. Uh, we pull in local talent from small distributed ledger companies to sense check the ideas that we workshop from the larger industry players. Uh, we contact our friends and colleagues in universities, regulatory bodies, and the like to address specific points that arise during the. Uh, uh, the work, and then we deploy some early solutions. So how far have we got? Well, we have uh, a lot of interest in the port sector. We have engagement in the oil and gas sector, and we have engagement in the construction and independent film sector. And we were mentioned in the national budget. There's Chigil Phil Hammond there holding the thread. Holding the thread. Um, right, so let's take you through one of these work examples. Um, we call this the weather compensation example. So we managed to get participants from some large, well-known construction firms, workshopped over two days um, from the very blue sky uh, beginnings of, I want to track a steel beam from a Chinese factory across the global supply, chip, supply network, put it in place in my uh, building, and then monitor its life for the next 70 years. I mean, we all want that. Sounds brilliant. It'd be amazing if we could get it done. That, I'm afraid, is probably too futuristic. We have to pull things back a little bit to smaller, more achievable, tangible, proximal things. So the idea was, where is your common pain in the industry right now? Where is there something where actually the payer and the buyer are aligned and that they're both feeling the pain? Because Lots of the smart contract ideas you may imagine would say, well, we can do faster payments. We can make sure that you'll pay faster for this. And then the company that's doing the paying says, but I'm used to having another month's interest in my bank account, thank you very much. I don't like the fact that you're going to take that money faster from me. So you have to find a, a reasonable approach where actually both sides are feeling almost equal pain. So here we think that whether compensation, we've mapped out the process with those participants, and the actual process is mind-bogglingly complex just to get compensated for asbestos weather events on the work site. Takes uh, months, takes lots of legal wrangling, takes uh, documentation flying left and right. So what if we could convert a simple set of clauses into a smart contract? You've probably heard this one before to give everyone shared visibility of conditions, shared visibility of the agreement before them, shared understanding of where this data source is going to come from. You engage the key stakeholders, so we've successfully managed to do that. Uh, and you uh, make sure that the system that you deploy is just the most basic data trading system. There's no financialization, there's no GDPR, PII shared on there. Identity is always a sticky issue, so try to avoid as much as possible on-chain PII. Um, tap into digital weather feeds through APIs, they're out there, and make sure that events are identical for all the parties. And then it allows this open innovation environment where other players can come and build apps that would tap into your system to provide different views, perhaps, for the foreman to the uh, truck driver and so on. So when a weather alert is recorded, the contract executes, and you can then automatically play that to all parties interested in the work site or accessing the work site, work site uh, who may be adversely affected, and then uh, make sure that either uh, you trigger a flag saying you must pay this amount of compensation at this time, leave that to an off-chain solution, or you can go into immediate dispute on that one. Okay. So where does this stand at the moment? Well, we've mapped out the process. We think we've attached some decent values and pains to it in terms of man hours and costs. 
Uh, we have uh, positive feedback from a couple of construction firms. Unfortunately, we've not had everyone fully engaged to dig into their pockets and fund the development of this by SMEs yet. Um, it's our belief that there has to be a little bit of skin in the game from the industry itself. There's no point in building free proofs of concept because if it costs nothing, you can leave it. So we will uh, continue engaging with industry, and if anyone here would be interested in seeing this sort of uh, solution taken forward, very happy to chat with you. Um, we are an open, uh, collaborative environment, and uh, I hope to speak to you all again in the break or wherever. So thank you very much. <laughs> Um, any questions, maybe briefly? I think I've managed to. Yeah. Any questions? Sure. So, how how do you see what you're doing here, uh, what you're doing in digital capital, kind of supporting the um, uh, construction space, and mm -hmm. what are the projects that you envision as like the the top topics mm -hmm. for people to hear get engaged? Yeah. So the, I think our model for the next two, three years is to lead people very gently along the pathway to realize the potential benefits of decentralization or a shared common ledger for small, small tangible problems so that the industry becomes educated about what this actually means, uh, about how to go out and commission these projects independently in the future so they don't face the failings they've had in the past. Uh, we're applying the same methodology in all the sectors we work, specifically for construction. This and a market, so the two that the industry participants uh, identified between them as the earliest uh, sort of go solutions were weather compensation and building a uh, decentralized marketplace to access uh, heavy capital equipment. So, you know, someone who's got a caterpillar sat on site unused could be used over town and make you a fraction of a penny. Well, you have to prove the state that it's in before it leaves your site. You have to know who's picked it up, when it was delivered, what the contracting was around it. You know, it's a big, expensive piece of equipment. You don't just want to let it out your site. So we thought that one was quite an attractive piece as well. Building marketplaces seems to be the things that most blockchain people have done with the, with the, in this early world. Um, as I said, if, if industry wants to come on board, put a little bit of money in to prime the pump, to let us fund some of these small developers, build the solutions, that's brilliant. We, we're happy to guide through whichever one comes. Any other thoughts, any other questions? Okay, great, thanks very much.